I didn't prepare anything as far as written goes because um, I never, when I do that, I just have a tendency to look down and I have no idea what I'm saying to you guys. So um, if I pause, it's because I've been taking that chemo medicine that Ms. Pearl talked about, tamoxifen, and I just switched over to Aramosin a few weeks ago and it messes with your head. And I, sometimes the words just don't come out like they're supposed to. Um, one of the things it also does is it makes you have hot flashes. And I have been standing back there praying that one would come along. <laughs> but it hasn't. So um, I'm also a little worried about the wind because I wore a dress today. And so I'm going to cross my legs and hope that it doesn't fly up. Um, I'm a nurse. And um, I've been a nurse for almost 10 years. And I've, gone, I've worked in clinics. And I've worked in home health. And I've worked in hospitals. And um, I've taken care of mastectomy patients. And uh, I never really thought it would happen to me. I don't have a family history. I was 37 years old when I was diagnosed. Um, I hadn't had a drink of alcohol in about eight years when I was diagnosed. Um, so all those risk factors that people kept telling me about and that I would read, um, I, I didn't fit the bill. I wasn't supposed to get cancer. Um, I, would, I would love to tell y'all that I, I found it on my own. That wasn't the truth. I would love to tell y'all that I was at my annual checkup and that I found it, that doctor found it, but it was really about a three-year um, checkup because, as I said, I was a nurse. And I'm a nurse, and I just didn't think I needed to go to the doctor like everybody else does. Um, but I, but for whatever reason, I ended up going to a doctor's an OBGYN appointment last September, <coughs> and um, I had gone because I had irregular periods, and I really wanted them to fix that. So when he started doing the breast exam and he went back to the other breast, I was, and he said, well, we've got a little problem here. And I said, no, no, I didn't come in for that. Go back down there. <laughs> and, um, and he said, let's go ahead and do, um, uh, you know, a, a mammography, mammogram, sorry, and, um, and probably do an ultrasound on the same day. And so I went, and um, like I said, I'm a nurse. And um, when they said that we need to go ahead and do the biopsy, I, um, I knew that something probably wasn't right. And that was on a Thursday. And from Thursday to Monday, I practiced the word fibroadenoma because I absolutely knew that that's what they were going to find. 80% of all lumps are fibroadenoma. Um, so I practiced that word over and over and over again. And when my doctor called me on Monday morning at 8 o'clock and told me that I had invasive ductal carcinoma, I said, that's not the word I practiced. <laughs> so um, I opted to have a double mastectomy um, with latissimus flax, which is where they take your latissimus muscle on both sides, and they move it around and make it your new pectoral muscle. That is not the point at all. <laughs> um, I, that was on October 5th last year. Um, I have participated in two Making Stride events. Um, we did. Um, my family got together and formed a team two weeks after my um, surgery. And the goal was to raise $500, and they raised $1,000. And then this year, the goal was to raise $1,000, and they raised $2,000. So every next year, I, who knows? Um, I walked this year. Last year, I just kind of walked around in circles. Um, but this year, um, I actually walked, and I herniated a disc. So. <laughs> I'm gonna have to like do a little exercise to get me prepped for next year. But um, what what you said about knowing why you know why you got cancer uh, over the last year, I have to tell the story, and then I'll stop so we can all go to a warmer place. But um, I met a woman. My son started a new school, and two schools had merged together. And I was on the football field with. Um, all these new moms. I didn't know any of the moms. And um, we had, they had decided that they were going to make treat bags. He's only 11. He's back there right now. But um, <laughs> we decided we were going to make treat bags for them for their first game. And as we were um, sitting there, there was myself and then two other ladies. And one of them said something about breast cancer. And I had never really known anybody personally that had it. And so I asked her a few questions. And 
She told me that she believes God had given her cancer that so she could help other people. Well, when I was diagnosed, she really helped me. And um, there was one other lady sitting there at that table. And in January of this year, she was diagnosed with breast cancer too. And I was able to turn around and help her. Nobody, nobody, unless they've gone through it, knows what it feels like. And it's so awesome to see all these women standing out here shaking their head yes and best friends dressed up. and <laughs> It's great. Uh, the medicine also makes your mouth dry up. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I'm new to this. I hope that I can come back year after year and tell y'all that I'm a two-year survivor and a three-year survivor. Um, because of early detection, I'm going to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, our next speaker is Miss Peggy Marcella, and she is a 16-year. Good job, baby. And the member of the